Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you so much for the new year, a new start, a new uh, beginning for some of us. Father, we just pray that you continue to watch over us, continue to bless us this year as we uh, strive to be yours more. Father, we thank you for being with us this morning as we come together to worship and honor you. We just pray that we do everything that's pleasing in your sight. Pray this in your son's name. Amen. Please stand.
apologize for sitting. My back's killing me. We're going to go to Happy New Year's, everybody. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. We're reading from Romans 12. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy. And proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberty. He who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love, and honor giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, reverent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continually to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. I need help on that one. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep, the, and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give peace to wrath, for it is written, written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing so, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with the good.
Take this world from me Don't need it come to celebrate the act that he did for us. I mean, the God of the universe, the God who created everything, wants you. I don't know how that plays in your mind or in your heart, but what an awesome fact that the God who created everything that's here wants me. <coughs> me, a sinner. Me, a person who has let him down and broke his heart time and time again, and yet he still wants me. And he proves it to us over and over and over as we gather each week to remember Christ. Remember the death, burial, resurrection of him and, and the salvation brought to us because of it. Today's no different. It's a new year and God still wants you. Jesus still died for you. This morning we're going to take communion to commemorate that, to, to remember that, to allow Him to become a part of us. His body and His blood as we, as we take it in to, to strengthen us, to guide us, to remind us of that salvation that's ours. And so this morning, prepare your hearts, prepare your minds as we come together to meet with Him. Again, this week we're going to take it the uh, style where you're going to come forward and take it as you're prepared. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Father, we come to you now. We just thank you so much for the love that you showed us, that you've shared with us, that you have continually reminded us of, Father. I'm thankful that you want me and that you're willing to send your son for me and for everyone that's here. Father, this morning that that fact doesn't go blindly onto us. I mean, we know what it took. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We just pray that you'll be with those who partake. Bless the cup, bless the loaf. We pray this in your son's name.
offering. Uh, every week we try to give you some way to explain offering to, to understand uh, what it is. And it's our gift back to God. It's our gift explaining to him and understanding that he has taken care of us and he has blessed us and he has given to us and in this moment we have an opportunity to give back to him for the church so that we can sit in chairs like this and in air like this and so that we can profess him so that we can teach others about him we're blessed we're blessed to know Him. We're blessed to know what He has done for us. And it's our opportunity to bless Him back and to bless others who are gifts. And so, as you prepare to give, and give us joyfully to Him. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for it today again. We thank You for the opportunity we have to give back to You. To take time out of our lives to acknowledge that You have blessed us, that You have taken care of us, and that we want to give to You so that others might know you, that they might understand why we're here, to praise, honor, and worship you. Father, thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for all that you do for us. And now, bless those who are giving. Bless those, that, Father, who have come to you. Pray this in your son's name.
So try and figure out what to speak on on the first day of the year. And we know New Year's, we know different things that have gone on and stuff like that. You know I forget glasses and somebody has blessed me with several beautiful pairs of glasses up here. Uh, man, you man, I can wear pink. Uh, but uh, I have this sermon prepared and I'm, I'm, I've been wavering all morning. I mean, I've been, there's things I want to say that's, that's not in my sermon. And then I think, well, I can save that for next week. It's still fresh new year. Then it comes back and says, well, maybe it's bugging me because today's the day that, that needs to be said. And, and so just bear with me because this is going to be um, hodgepodge. Okay? There's going to be the main thought, but I'm, I just know it. I feel it. We're, we're going to jump okay, and, and go around. So I don't apologize for it. I just tell you to be ready for it. Okay? Uh, and Robin, don't ever apologize because you have to sit with your back. I mean, I tell people all the time when Glenn came last week and brought his own, brought his own chair, so he could be comfortable. Glenn has not worked in three weeks, got bad, really bad neck and stuff. And he says, "Sorry, I had to bring a chair." But don't apologize. I mean, you're here. You know, and that's what God would desire is that you do that. So don't ever apologize. As, as Gibbs would say on NCIS, that's a sign of weakness. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I'm oh, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter 1. Start right at verse 1. This is the way it reads. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints throughout Acacia. So, when I read that, in my mind it reads different. Okay? Let me share that with you one more time. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and in my mind it's Tracy by the will of Christ, or Tracy, worker of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and to you all, to the church at New Hope, together with all the saints throughout Acacia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferers of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patience, endurance, and the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so you will also share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, but about the hardships we suffered for the province of you. We are, or Asia, we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even for our lives. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that we will continue to that he will continue to deliver us. As you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Um, Just in your mind, go back over 2022. 
just go, go back. <coughs> I mean, when, when I'm doing it, it's like, oh gosh, we've had, uh, we've had losses in church. Losses through death and losses through people moving and, and loss, we've lost. I mean, we've just come out of two years of, of, of COVID and all the wild stuff there. I mean, <coughs> talk about being distressed. You know, and, and first down. But we continue. I mean, for me personally, I have lost a sister in June. Heart attack in August. Mom has been really sick November and December. Her sister just had a heart attack this last week and is in, is in critical condition. I mean, just things happen. And this verse says, when you're comforted by the comforter. When you're comforted by the comforter. Or when I'm comforted by the comforter, then I can then comfort you. I mean, it talks about what we go through. They thought... Paul, Timothy, thought that they were surely going to die where they were. It got that perilous for them, and they said, well, I hope I have this attitude, whatever it will be. Because we know that the Comforter is going to comfort us, and at some point we will then again be able to comfort you, or we'll be with the Comforter. Now, I don't know if you, if you notice it, but through verses 3 through 7, the word comfort or comforter was mentioned nine times. When you read it, and you read it in your mind, and you look at it, it seems like it's saying comfort, 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 comforter, comforter, comfort. And you're like, what? God's trying to make a point. He is here for you. And if He can comfort you, then you can comfort others. <coughs> I didn't mention hurricane in there. It didn't really affect me. We tend to mention those things that affect us, right? Lost a sister, heart attack, mom sick. The hurricane to me was a comforting outlet. I mean, we were able to go and help hundreds, maybe even thousands of people. We, Little New Hope, did that. We are still going out and helping people. I don't want to embarrass anybody or anything, but, but Lila is here. And Lila is one of our people that we've helped and are continuing to help to try to get back on their feet and get things going. And, and it's what we're about. It's what the church was meant to be. I mean, if we want to talk storm and talk about all the roast we handed out and all the chicken we handed out and all the, all the hamburger we handed out and, and all the meals we cooked, if we want to talk about the church and, and the number of people who have stayed here a couple nights a couple weeks the number of people who continually come in to do laundry because they don't have that facility at their homes yet and the number of people who come in on a weekly basis and take showers I don't know if you all know that I mean I'm pretty trusting that almost on any given day the door over there is unlocked People come in and do laundry, and people come in and take showers. Some people came in and cook meals, and do their stuff. I mean, and I just think that's the way the church should be. I think the church should be what they're talking here, the comforter. The one that helps their pain. I mean, we're talking about Peyton and Trim. <coughs> that may not sound big to you guys, but to those who were totally destroyed, that's getting close to normal. Mike's talking, I've got all my doors, now i just got to get them in. It's getting back to being a little bit more normal. I mean, looking for a place to stay, looking for a place. I, I have a young couple at my house. Um, 
came down to to try to make a life here and do stuff and the first couple of weeks worked out great made good money doing their stuff and then their partner they were with just hasn't come through and now they're like and they're staying in our place they're staying in drew's camper drew up line it up and, and they pay rent each month to live there so let me back up they're supposed to pay rent each month to live there. But when you're not working and you're not doing, you're not paying. You know, and then just before Christmas, he came to me and said, okay, this is it. Savings is gone, everything's gone. This is the final 300 we have, but we want to give it to you for rent. And I said, you can't give that to me for rent. Here's why. I said, you have a wife and a kid who are still going to need food. We're still going to, I mean, it's Christmas, you got to get them a little something. You got to, I said, yes. and I said these words to him. It's not about the money. And we were really hoping that they would be sitting right here today. You know, we invited them to do that. And we made provisions. Drew's coming back Thursday. He's going to be here for a couple months, and so he wants his camper back. And we told his family back in November, come the 1st of January, you're going to have to move out. They come to us and said, do you have any idea how much rent is? I said, yeah, you got a sweet deal here. You know, we, 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 we know what's going on out there. But it's like, oh. And so I am not telling you this tweet our horn, but we're just like, okay, we have a we have a guest house. That should rent for a whole lot more than you're paying for the camper or something like that, but <clears throat> we're gonna let you move into that guest house. And, and yesterday we got them a job with the company that's gonna let them start tomorrow. And did different things. And it's it's not so that they can pay their rent. It's not for it's, it's so that they can live life and I wasn't there to talk to him and I told her and I said we ought to just treat them like they're our kids and so our rule around our house is if you're there living you go to church <clears throat> well they need to go to church well their the husband and the little boy are sick today so they will be able to be in this room but it's like we're, just, we're going to treat them like ours and, and make them so that they can do their stuff and, and if they ever get to a point that they can pay rent? Okay. But it's not about that. It's, it's getting this couple on their feet and showing them Christ. It's comforting them because at some point in life we were comforted. And I'm telling you this because Harvey has comforted me in life. In different things and things he's done through the years here at church, he's comforted me. And Gary comforts, Gary comforts me every week when he teaches Sunday school, and I don't have to. That, that's such a comfort to know that, that the people are being fed, and I get to go and be a part of and not have to be the leader of. And then uh, I go through the whole room. Cindy has comforted me, and, and John, Eric, and Sheree have comforted me. And I go through each and every person in this room, and I can say, here's what you did for me. At some point, you comforted me, and I, I hope that in some way, some form, I have returned that to you. You see, that's what we're going to focus on this year. 2023 and me. Me. So that we can, we can look at life through me. And when I say me, you have to say the word what, Gary? Me. Me. 2023, it's about me. And it's not going to be about you. We didn't come here today because of you. It's going to be about you in Christ. And what you can give to help others, to comfort others, to, to lead others. You see, I'm, I'm standing here today and I'm thinking, gosh, there are three people I had in mind that I thought this sermon would be 
and they're not here, so it must not be for them. But it's for you, because you're here. And I want you to look to your left. And I want you to look to your right. And I don't know if you notice the same thing I notice. Well, Gary, when you look left and right, what do you see? No, that's in front of you. That's in front of you. Left. My, my, my left. Right. No, that's in front of you. No, what, what's next to you? Boy, you're missing the point. There's a lot of, there's a lot of empty chairs around you, Gary. And, and you have no friends? You didn't shout. What? What's the reason? What's the reason that the chair next to you is empty? And the answer is me. Now, I got this this week. I was sharing this idea with somebody that we're going to talk about comforting and me, and I said, you know, why would there be empty seats? And he said. I don't know, that's why we hired you. <laughs> and I had to step back and go, oh, people don't see it as I see it. I, I'm trying to lead you and teach you to be outgoing, to be the comforters, to be the people that, that invite those neighbors, the people across the street, the friends, the people you run into in Walmart, the, the, those people, to fill seats. Because I feel, I feel blessed that the God of all creation wants me. I feel blessed that I've gotten to know Him and that I can live a life based with Him. And I just think that everybody out there should have that. And it might be, it just might be that I'm the only one here today that thinks that. And that you're all comfortable as we are. We've made you too comfortable in, in what you are and, and the comfort that you get is just like, oh, you know. But I don't think God is comfortable with it. I don't think God wanted that seat next to you to be empty. I don't think he wants the seat behind you empty. I, I think what he wants is for us, his people, to start comforting people and showing people and giving them the same hope and, and salvation that we have. And so as we look at a new year, we have to look at ourselves and say, okay, me. It's not up to you. It's up to me. Say that. It's not up to you. It's up to me. You said it like you believe it. It's not up to you. It's up to me. It is up to me to fill these seats this year. And, and I don't make resolutions. I, I, I'm not a resolution person. And if you read my Facebook, you'll see this week I said, yeah, I don't make resolutions. But I do make decisions. And I put under that I decided that this year, I'm going to be more like him. <coughs> I decided this year, I'm going to give more of him to you. I decided this year that it's going to be on me to fill the seats. And I said to myself, I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that out there. I'm going to tell people I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to find out Sunday who's with me. And it's not being with me. It's going to be with him. Because he will guide you. If you make the decision to be his more, he's going to help you. If you make the decision that you're going to be out there more, sharing people, he's going to help you. He's going to give you those people to share with. If you make the decision that you're going to fill a chair, fill a 
still make it happen. Whether you think you can do it or not, he'll make it happen. And this year we can grow. And it's not growing so that we can get more offering. It's not growing so that we can say, hey, look, we, it's, it's not about that. It's about him. And I think that my God and my Savior desires me to tell others. To make a difference. To be a light in our community. I mean, I love the pictures that we put with songs and that one song where we have all the different lighthouses. That one man standing in that doorway as that water's coming around. Can you imagine being that man? In that picture, he could literally stand in that doorway and say, me. And it's all up to him to shine the light in that lighthouse. Nobody else. Most of those guys are out there alone. And it's up to them. And if they're not shining the light, if they're not making sure it's burning all the time, what happens? Crashes, shipwrecks, danger. I mean, there's a reason that the lighthouse is there. There's a reason that in the scripture we're called the light of the world. That, that we're called about, I mean, as we comfort people, as they get comforted, then they can comfort others. Someone out there cannot give Jesus away if someone in here hasn't given it to him. I cannot give away what I don't have. I'm giving away a guest house for a few months to, to get these people on their feet. I'm giving up certain things. It really isn't going to cost me. But the benefit that comes from it, if they're in these seats, if they're learning about Jesus, if they come to a saving grace in Him, far outweigh anything that it might cost them. And I believe that. So I want you to look at the scripture. I want you to understand what they're saying here. When he says, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of our lives. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God. Nowhere in the Bible does it say your life is going to be easy. Was it easy if your heart fixed? I mean, I've now been there. That, that's a struggle. When they're standing over you saying, don't you go nowhere, you stay here. That's a struggle. When you realize you're that close. And so you make it through that and you reevaluate and you say, I got to do something different. I thought I was doing it different, but I got to do it more different. I've got to be a better comforter, a better that you that you get it. Steve and Rhonda are talking about it. We don't know that we're letting them go yet. They're talking about going to Tennessee. And, and we've got to give them everything we got. So when they go there, they can give others. That they can continue to be the light that they are, have been here. And that's the same for each and every one of you. As you as you're here for a while, here for a couple months, and going back, be the light. Take what we have here with you to there, and, and, and be the light, and do those things. And we don't know how long we have. You know? 
I thought life was a piece of cake. Until August. Then I realized cake's bad for me. <laughs> and, and I've got to change things and I've got to be different about what I do. That's the same thing with us. You know Jesus. I'm not asking you know of him. Most everybody knows of him, but do you know <coughs> him? Do you have a life changing relationship with him? You see, because it is impossible to know him and have a relationship with him and not be different. Impossible. If you're not changed since you met Jesus, something's wrong. And after 30 some years in ministry, it took a heart attack to tell me, you gotta, you gotta get more serious. You gotta comfort more. But they're talking here. And comfort can come in any way, shape, or form. Sometimes it's just, hey, it's good to see you. There, there's a story that a uh, guy tells and he said, I heard about a suicide. And I asked the family, why did Eric kill himself? And the family's response was, we really don't know. He was number one at work top of the world, making good money, wasn't drugs, wasn't alcohol, wasn't a relationship, I mean, it wasn't any of these things. And it wasn't until they were cleaning out his house that they found the note under some stuff on his desk that said, 30 plus years and nobody complimented him. He was just looking for someone to say, hey, good job. Hey, way to go. I mean, it, we're, we're talking comfort. We're not talking big things. It, it could be a smile. It could be saying hi to a complete stranger. It could be asking the question, and don't ask this if you don't want to know. I learned this this week. I said to a man, how are you? And I'm not kidding you. My partner went to the truck and sat down. And I stood there. Walked off. And when I got back to the truck, Jeff goes, do you know that? That took him 38 minutes to tell you. And I said, I didn't realize it was that long, but yeah, it was a while. And he said, it must have been really important for him to share. An absolute, complete stranger says to you, how are you? And you go into this big dialogue about, well, let me just tell you. And, and I firmly believe he felt better that somebody listened. I think he was thrilled that somebody said, how are you? And he had a chance to explain and do some stuff. And he had, he had don't get me wrong, I talked to him in some minute. I mean, he had some issues. And he lives, he lives down in Benita and told him where the church was, and he goes, oh, gosh, I don't leave this town. I, I can't get all the way up there. And my words were this, there's churches on every corner. <laughs> Literally almost every corner. If you live in Lee County, Florida, there's 493 churches in Lee County, Florida. And if you can't find one, you're not looking. And you'll find one that will meet your needs. So touch you. And, and this guy needed that. In this story, I mean, 
true story. Eric killed himself because nobody in his 30 years of life complimented him. Well, at least he didn't feel like anybody did. Maybe someone did. He just didn't read it that way. But, but to take your life because of that. Nobody comforted him. I'm pretty sure I can go out on a limb and say nobody shared the comforter with him. Because the comforter would have comforted him. And it comes back to me. What if I didn't ask that guy, how are you? What shape would he be in today? I know what my partner's saying. That's 38 minutes that we could have been doing something else. And life happens. In my eyes, that was a great 38 minutes spent. <clears throat> Help someone to get some answers or to give them some ideas of in their life. How would you see it? Waste of time? Great moment of sharing, of comfort, of giving to. And that's what we want this year. This year we want to give. We want to share. We want to comfort. We want to fill seats. We want others to have what we have. We want others to know this the sacrifice made for them. We want others to live life in Him like we're supposed to be doing. It's all about me. Me this year. Kyle, who's it about? Me. Me. Trisha, who's it about? Me. It's about me. It's about us doing it. And making a decision to, not a resolution, resolutions get broke. I resolved one year that I was going to work out every day at the gym. And that lasted a, a week, month, month. I think we went a month. And I thought, oh, I'm still a member. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a paying member, but, you know. No, it, it, not a resolution, a decision. Every week we give an invitation him. You're not making a resolution, you're making a decision. Will I accept him? Will I follow him? Will I turn this over to him? That's what we're asking this week. Will you be his comforter? Will you share with others? can't give what you don't have. And so we have to make a decision to be His. Every day, every moment. We have to make a decision to serve Him. Every day, every moment. We have to make a decision to be His in all things. That's what I mean when I say it's about me. Me making the decision to be His to do what he needs me to do. And I believe this. Because I made that decision. He's going to put people like this guy this week. In my path. That when I say. How do you do it? He's just going to open up. And it's going to be an open door for me to say to him. Oh gosh. What about. You know, I sent him to. A. Community church at the front of Benita uh, Bay. It's right on a little lake. I said, man, it's so scenic. It's neat. You can sit in church in the middle of the lake and hear the preacher. <laughs> See what the message is. Now, I'm not there today. I don't know if he went there or not. But I at least planted the seed. I at least told him a place he could go. I at least gave him a direction to head. And it's up to him. giving you a direction to go, and then it's up to you. 
do you choose him? Do you choose to serve him? Do you choose to make this year about me? For him. For him. We're going to stand and sing our hymn of invitation. It's your opportunity to choose, decide to follow him. Decide to be his. If you're here and it's the first time ever and you want to choose him to be yours, I mean, I have to talk to you about that. Show you what it takes in us. Or, maybe you're like me, and this week I have to decide it was about me. i got to get a little more serious this year. i got to get out the wall. I've got to give more. i got to do more for Him. Whatever your decision is, we stand and as we sing.